Hi, church family. I'm so glad to see you again today. Are we ready for our church service on this day? We are so thankful that you're joining us once again, and we're going to keep coming back and meeting whatever way we need to. You know, as we get our service started today, we want to make sure that we are bringing hope and reminding you that God is still working in the midst. You know, I was reading today in uh, the book of Zephaniah, which I know it's in the Old Testament. Trust me, it's there. But coincidentally, this is a book that is, happens to be about world catastrophe. And it speaks about after the kings have led the people astray from God. But in through this world catastrophe, the people that have been closest to God, they come back to the Lord. They humble themselves. They come back to the Lord. And the Lord does something so beautiful. It says, he purifies the lips of his people and they call on the name of the Lord and they serve him shoulder to shoulder. What does that mean? That means that he puts praise and worship and things that are pleasing in the mouth of the people who have come before him. And after that, it comes the shining light. It starts out with this whole world catastrophe, but ends with this beautiful shining light. The word says, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. I love hearing that he delights in me. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrows will be removed from you. And it is at this time he will deal with those who have oppressed you. He rescues those who have been burdened. And he gathers all those who have been scattered. He gives them praise and honor in every land where people have been put to shame. But at this time, I gather you at, and I bring you home. I will, honor, I will give you honor and praise among the people of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes. Is that a word we can get with? I know I can. Amen. So as we get our service started, let's have a, a little prayer and get our hearts ready. We know that sometimes we're scrambling. We're going to get ready to hear the word. We're going to get ready to worship. But let me remind you, as we get ready to worship, praise melts away the pain and it brings restoration, which is what it was talked about right here in this word. So we're going to get ready. We're going to stand and we're going to give all of our praise to God. Let's bow our heads before we get into worship. Lord, we welcome your presence today. We welcome your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. Father, I am thankful for each and every person that is watching today. Lord, you have seen the struggles and you have seen the joys of everyone that is with us today. God, I thank you that you have been with them through it all. I thank you that you are still planning things for the future that they don't even know about. And God, as we rise up and lift our voices to praise you, I pray that your spirit would pour out upon us and allow us to see you in a new way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. I want to welcome you guys again to this time of worship. So if you guys could stand up where you are right now, so we can come into the presence of the Lord. Amen.
So before we get into our service today, guys, we want to give you an update on what's going on with our church. Because as everything is changing so constantly and rapidly, we are maintaining consistency and having things for you to engage with during this time that we're all home watching everything online. So I first want to welcome you if you're a first time visitor. If this is your first time viewing us, we would love for you to let us know. You can either type it in in the comments below or go to our webpage at dayspringmh.org and hit the first time visitors tab and we will get to know who you are through that, filling out your name and maybe your phone number. Why? Because our pastor does not want to neglect you. Even though we cannot see you, we would love to reach out to you and welcome you to our church. The other thing we have continuing on is our 7 p.m. prayer. Why are we doing that? I can hear some hearts saying, still, yes, we are still doing our 7 7 p.m. prayer and you will get the daily texting alerts. Because covering each other in prayer and consistently is powerful. We know that not everybody can do it every every single day at 7, but every single day somebody will be covering all of these areas in prayer. And you know, as this time goes on, and we may find out that there's people who have contracted this virus, or we may know somebody who has it in our church family or beyond, and what is most important during this time? To keep everyone covered in prayer. God is mindful of our prayers. And so this is why our 7 p.m. prayer is so powerful that every single day there are many prayers going up. We also want to encourage you to send in your worship videos. We're asking that you send us videos or even a picture of you doing worship at home because we have kind of a special little plan for it. It doesn't matter what song you do it to, just about a 10 to 15 second clip will be fine. And you can can email it to admin at dayspringmh.org. And we haven't forgotten about the kids. We know that you guys have a special place in our church and we are doing everything we can to keep you connected to where you belong. And so we are constantly uploading new material, new content for you guys to enjoy, for you to have fun with, activities that are just for you, worship that is just for you, because sometimes we know the grown-up stuff is boring, but we want you to continue to have fun and enjoy your relationship with Jesus. So have your parents help you check out our website um, every Every day, every other day, we're always uploading new stuff for you. And finally, we want to take a moment out to collect or to receive our tithes and offerings. I know during this time it may be hard, or some of you may just be coming and viewing us for the very first time, so I want to assure you there is no pressure, there is no obligation. But God is still and always will be an amazing provider. And we don't want to miss out on our blessing by being able to bless others. There are two ways that you can give online, both of them. You can go to our website, which is at dayspringmh.org, and you can click on the tithes and offering tabs and and fill out that in that way. Or you can do the push pay through the texting app, 77977. So as we are thinking about what we're gonna receive for our tithes and offerings, I really wanna make sure that we all collectively pray and ask the Lord to bless what he's already given us and multiply as it's coming in. So I'm gonna pray, and if you would bow your heads with me. Lord, we are so grateful, Father God, that you are always a faithful provider. Lord, you will never leave us without, Father God, and I know that you have many opportunities, you have many resources for us, God, and you are always faithful to provide them for us. Lord, we are grateful for all that we receive, Lord Jesus. We ask that you would multiply it, Lord, that people would be blessed by what's coming in, Father God, that you would make ways for the church to move in new ways to reach more people, Father God. Lord, we are grateful for this time that we have, and we pray that you would increase those of us all the more. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's welcome our pastor who has a word from God that I know is going to bless you. Hello and welcome. Would you join me in prayer just before we get started? 
if you would close your eyes and uh, pray with me and uh, let's talk to the Lord for a few moments. Jesus, we thank you so much for this opportunity that you grant us to be able to open your word. I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit and would allow for our hearts to be opened to receive the message you have for us. I pray for everyone today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, we send our greetings to all our campuses and microsites in Mission Hills, in Panorama City, in Palmdale, Tucson, Arizona, in Torrance, in Seattle, Washington, in New Jersey, Aruba, and even in Santana, El Salvador. We love you so much, and uh, we want to, you to know that we are praying for you as well. I'm so glad that you decided to connect uh, to our online worship experience today. I pray that you're safe, enjoying time with your family and, uh, and your loved ones. Spending time at home these days provides us with a great opportunity to enrich our relationships with our spouses and with our kids, as well as with our extended family. You know, because if you call them at any time now, you're probably going to find them. Well, today we're going to begin a new series uh, of messages, and we're calling it Faith and Hope. That's right. Faith and hope. Uh, I've been privileged of doing, uh, I, I'm privileged today uh, to do the first sermon of this series. And then Pastor Nestor is going to finish off the rest of the series in the weeks to come. Faith and hope are words that are so common in the Christian vocabulary. They're used quite frequently. However, I've discovered that many people don't really understand what they mean. And even fewer people have realized the role they play in our lives. So today, I want to talk to you about faith and hope. Uh, I've titled this message, Walking by Faith. In the New Testament, the early believers were called followers of the way in Acts chapter 9, verse 2. Followers of the way were those who had believed the good news of Jesus and had decided to follow the Lord. And this uh, new walk had completely transformed their lives. It changed their behavior. It changed the way they talked. It changed their habits. It changed them completely. These men and women who in the past were pursuing carnal passions are now following a path of godliness. Uh, this new walk of, of faith was leading them in a totally new direction. I want you to, to look with me in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, which is going to be our foundational uh, text for today. Look at what it says. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Once again, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So what does it mean to walk by faith? I'm sure you've all heard it before. We walk by faith. But what does that mean? Well, faith sounds so ethereal, so intangible, so difficult to attain. We have a tendency to think that it's only for the super spiritual people. But this text tells us that faith is a lifestyle. That's correct. God wants you to walk in faith every day. But how do we do that? How can you and I walk by faith? Well, let me suggest three biblical ways today. First, the first way is by fixing your eyes on what is not seen. If you want to walk by faith, you first have to fix your eyes on what is not seen. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can I fix my eyes on something that I cannot see? Well, the way that that is done is through faith and hope. Uh, look with me at what Hebrews 11 verse 1 says. Now, Hebrews 11 is a chapter that speaks to us about faith and how it works. And it gives us examples of people that utilize faith in their lives to do incredible things. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews 11 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. So how does it work? Well, let me tell you how it works. 
God always begins by giving you something. That's right. He begins by giving you something. He gives you a promise. He gives you a dream. He gives you a vision of a better future. He paints a picture in your mind of what can be tomorrow. That promise, that dream, that vision, that picture becomes your hope. It's what you hope for. Faith is the assurance that what God has promised is going to come to fruition. Faith and hope never operate in the realm of the visible, but in the realm of what cannot be seen in the natural. In other words, faith doesn't live in the past and it doesn't live in the present. Faith and hope live in the future. Faith lives in anticipation of what is coming. Paul explains it best in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 24 and 25. Read it with me. It says, for in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. But just because we can't see it in the natural doesn't mean that we can't see it. In fact, we can see it, but we see it with the eyes of hope. I think the Living Translation helps us to understand this a little bit better. Let's look at it. Romans chapter 8, verse 24 and 25 in the New Living Translation says this. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. In other words, that faith is seeing the future that what we hope for is already here. In the kingdom of God, things work differently than in the world. In the world, great people are those who are served. But in God's kingdom, great people are those who serve. In the world, if you want more, you have to retain everything you get. But in the kingdom of God, the more you give, the more you get. In the world, you have to see to believe. But in the kingdom of God, you have to believe in order to see. You see how that works? In the kingdom of God, you have to believe in order to see. If you believe it, then you will be able to see it. And if you see it, then you can achieve it. If you believe it, then you can see it. And if you see it, then you can reach it. If you believe it, then you can see it. And if you can see it, then you can obtain it. You can take ownership of it. Through faith and hope, the impossible becomes possible. Soren Kinkergaard once said it this way. Hope is a passion for the possible. That's right. Hope is a passion for the possible. See, sometimes we think that hope is, is kind of like a, a, a thing we want, a good thing. It's kind of superficial, like, like you know, I, I hope that, that the Dodgers win the pennant this year. Well, they're not going to do it this year, I don't think, unless we start playing. But anyway, uh, but, but, but it's, it's more than that. Hope is really something that is foundational. It is deep. The actor Christopher Reeve once said, once you choose hope, anything is possible. Those are incredible words. Once you choose hope, then anything is possible. So the first thing you have to do is to fix your eyes on what is not seen. The second thing to do to be able to walk by faith is to embrace what God wants for you. That's right. Embrace what God wants for you. Now, what does God want for you? Well, look at what the Bible says. In Jeremiah 29, 11, you know this verse. Many of you know it by memory. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God wants the very best for your life. God wants to give you a future full of hope. Now, what is hope? Well, hope is a joyful expectation of God's best for your future. Let me repeat that again. Hope 
is a joyful expectation of what God's best is for your future. Hope desires what God wants to give you. That's right. Hope desires what God wants to give you. Now, what you hope for will ultimately determine what you receive. If you have great hopes, then you will receive great things. But you have to embrace God's best for your life. We only have one life to live, you know. And don't you think that we should live it and to receive God's best, to live it in such a way that we are living in, in God's best for our lives? The problem is that we don't always want God's best. Now, you would think that everybody would, but, but the reality is that we don't always want God's best. We want what we think is best. And a conflict then be, begins between what God wants for me and what I want for me. But what I want to tell you today is that what God wants for you will always be much, much better than anything you could ever want for yourself. That's why you have to decide to embrace what God wants for your life. Otherwise, you will accept a life of mediocrity. And who wants that? A lower level of life. No one wants to live like that. But this is what happened to Israel. Look at what the Bible says. They, they did something that a lot of us sometimes do. Look at what they did. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 25 says, Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not right? Is it not your ways that are not right? See, Israel chose what they wanted for their life. And sometimes we do the same. We, we choose what we want, and then we rationalize our choices. We say things like this. Uh, no, uh, what God wants for me is really not the best. It's too restrictive. He's cramping my style. No, what God wants is, is too hard. This, this life that God wants me to live is, is too difficult to live. No, no, no. My way is better. Then later we end up in trouble. We end up discouraged. We sometimes end up destroying our life. If you want the best for your marriage, then choose God's way. If you want the best for your love life, then choose God's way. If you want what's best for your business, then choose God's way. Even in your ministry, choose God's way. You see, you can also choose the opposite. You can choose to reject God's way. And that's what the Pharisees did in Luke chapter 7, verse 30. Look at, look at it with me. Look, but the Pharisees and the experts of the law rejected God's purpose for themselves. Because they rejected what God wanted for them, they ended up missing God's best for their lives. Huh. How many people are missing God's best for their lives because they're choosing their own way? Now, the Bible is full of examples of people who rejected God's way. Judas, Samson, King Saul, and the list goes on and on. They all missed God's best for their life. So how do I gain the kind of hope to choose what God wants for me? Well, I got to tell you, hope flows from your relationship with God. Yeah, Hope flows from your relationship with God and from his word. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Such things were written in scripture long ago to teach us. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as, as we wait patiently for God's promise to be fulfilled. Now notice that the scripture gives us hope. The Word of God gives us hope. God's promises are found in the Bible. What God wants you to do is clearly stipulated in His Word. 
dreams and visions flow out of God's will for your life. And God's word is his will for your life. So the third thing we need to do to walk by faith is to have, is to activate your faith. That's right. Activate your faith. Now, faith is never stagnant. Faith never stands still. Faith is not stationary. Faith is actually an action word. Faith, in, in fact, is tested by our actions. The Bible says this in James chapter 2, verse 17. Faith by itself is not accompanied by actions, is dead. Faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is what? It's dead. If you say you have faith, but that faith doesn't move you towards action, that faith is dead. So how does one activate one's faith? Well, you do it by taking steps towards what you hope for. How do I do that? By making one choice after another. You see, faith is making choices today that will lead me to God's best in my future. In, in order to do this, I have to stop looking at my present situation and start looking at the future that God has for me. Now, I have several things that I want you to see and as an example of these things. And, and uh, I, I, I got this, this dead tree on one side and, and then on the other side, I got this Easter lily, which, which is for the occasion. And by the way, uh, it, it just reminds us of the new life that God wants for us. Now, I'm going to explain this in a little bit, but I wanted to give you a heads up in, in what I'm going to do. But first, let me tell you what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, says this. So we don't look at the troubles we see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. Now, I want to use this illustration. This is what we see now. We see problems, difficulties. We see sickness. We see death. But, 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 but this, this is hope. And, and hope, sometimes we cannot see. We cannot see it in the natural, but we can see it in the spiritual realm. You see, there's a difference, and, and you need to know it. Now, the Bible says that we need to change our gaze from trouble so that we can see a better future. We need to change our gaze from this And we need to move to be able to look at this. That is what the Bible tells us. And so we move from, from death to life. And what allows us to do that is faith. It's faith. Now, does this mean that I ignore the circumstances? No. Does this mean that I pretend that bad things are not happening to me? No. We need to recognize our present reality. But then we must decide that we're not going to dwell there. In other words, I'm not going to live here. I'm not going to embrace this. I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to camp out here. I want to camp out over here. I want to live over here. I want to live in the abundance of what God wants to give me. Now, Living by faith means that you are dwelling, uh, or living by sight, I'm sorry, it means that you are dwelling in the problem and circumstances. But living by faith means that you are choosing hope. That's what living by faith is. That you are choosing hope. You are making a choice to look not at your circumstances, but you're making a choice to live by faith. Faith, by faith. Now, let me see if I can explain it in this way. Uh, on one side, we have uh, things that you can see. Uh, on this side, you, you can see it. It's right in front of you. And when, what's on this side is, is sadness, because this is where sadness abides. You see, here is where worry 
lives. Here's where discouragement is found. Here is where fear invades your soul. Here is where depression attacks you. This is what you see before you. And if you're not careful, all these negative things are going to invade your soul. But I recommend that you look at the other side. Because on this side, on this side we have a totally different thing. We have creativity and innovation because here is where creativity and innovation live. Here is where improvement lives. And listen, 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 listen. Follow me. I'm going to go right there for a minute. But, 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 but look, it's over here. Here is where miracles happen. Here is where healing happens. Here is where freedom is. Here is where you're going to find peace. Not over here. You're going to find it over here. Am I driving you crazy yet? It's not over here. It's going to be on the hope side of things. That's why God says that we need to walk by faith. And what is walking by faith? It means that we begin to walk towards what we do not see. And that is the hope that we anticipate is going to come our way. Now, the key to move from one end to the other is called faith. The key to move from sadness to the abundance of God is called faith. You see, faith moves you from dryness to thriving. Faith moves you from desperation to peace and security. Faith moves you from obstacles to solutions. God has given you a dream. So keep moving forward towards its fulfillment. If God gave you a dream, don't stay over here. Begin to walk towards it. You see, God has given you a promise. So keep expecting it. But how do I activate my faith? Here it is. By making choices. That's right. Faith is a choice. God has given you power to choose. Decide that you are not going to live a reactionary life. That you're not going to react to what you see. That you're going to live by what you hope for. That you're not going to camp over here on sadness and worry. But you're going to continue to believe in God in the midst of darkness. You're going to believe that there is light coming in your future. Look again, look again at what the text says uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. For we walk by faith, not by sight. The message translation says it this way. I like it. It says, it, it, it's what we trust in, but don't yet see that keeps us going. You see, that is the motor. Faith is the motor that keeps on giving. You keep moving towards that which God has promised you. You keep moving towards that which God has shown you. You keep moving towards that that God has promised in your life. You see, what you see in the present will depress you. But hope will lift you up. Living by faith means that you are choosing to walk towards God's best in your life. Living by faith means that you are choosing to live in expectation of a divine miracle. Some of you need a miracle and I'm going to pray that today you receive your miracle. But you must decide to walk by faith. You see, living by faith means that you are confident that what you hope for will become a reality. That this will become a reality for me someday. And, and someday, soon, this will happen. I want to I uh, leave you with this version of the verse we read at the beginning. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Look at what it says. Faith is being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we don't 
see it. That's walking by faith. Focusing on hope. The things that God wants to give us. So, in conclusion, do you want God's best in your life? Well, then don't reject God's ways. Today, you have an opportunity to open your arms and embrace what God wants for your life. You say, what does he want for my life? Well, he wants to forgive you. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you salvation. He wants you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He wants to change your life. He wants to make you a new person. He wants to do an extraordinary thing in you. Today, everything can change for you if you just open your heart and receive him. Now, you have a choice. You can either embrace what God wants for your life or you can choose your own way. Nobody is going to be able to force you either way. But I want to highly recommend as a person that has opened his heart to the Lord's way, I want to tell you that there is no better life than that. And so today, I want to pray with you. Because if you want to do it today, I want to, I want to teach you how to do that. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, you, you, you simply come as you are. And you open your heart and you, and you tell the Lord that you are, are wanting his way. And you choose his way today. And you welcome him into your life. And if you do that today, Jesus will come in your heart. He will forgive your sins and he will change you forever. So would you do that with me? I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. In fact, I'm going to ask everybody that's, that's in your room right now and in, in that living room, um, your family, everybody, would you please close your eyes? And maybe there's somebody today that needs Jesus there in that room. And, I, and I'm, going to, I'm going to say this prayer out loud. Would you repeat it after me? Just go ahead and repeat it. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I recognize that I am a sinner. That I have been walking away from God. But today, I repent. I open my heart and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I want to walk by faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, then Jesus forgave you. And you're going to start a brand new life. Listen, you're going to give me the greatest joy if you call the number uh, uh, of, of our church. If you maybe, uh, if you're watching via Facebook or one of, one of the uh, different uh, platforms, would you send us a note and just simply say, I chose God's way. And if you do that, I'm, I'm going to find a way to, to send you a Bible so that you can start reading it and, and begin to find out what God's purpose is in your life. You find out what his promises are for your life, that you find out what his will is for your life. And it's going to be an exciting journey. And so please write us, let us know, call us, let us know. We love to hear from you. Thanks again. Blessings on you. Now, I want to do one last thing before I'm done. Every Sunday, every month, uh, we dedicate one Sunday uh, to anoint people. We basically pray for people's needs. And today I want to do it uh, via this new way of doing things. I, I, I want to do it um, in, a, in, a, in a virtual way, if you would. And so if you would allow me, uh, I want to go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring this uh, this oil right here and I've uh, I've set some uh, little cups this is olive oil and uh, if you want me to pray for you today then I'm going to ask you to do something would you would you run to the kitchen and get some oil now maybe you don't have olive oil in, in your house you might have some vegetable oil in, in your house. Uh, Crisco is, is fine. Whatever it is that you have in terms of oil, you can, you can use that. And then what I want you to do is I, I want you to find 
some cups, some small cups like this. Now, this is going to be really important. What I'm going to ask you to do after you have your oil is that I'm going to ask you to just put just a few drops in each one of the cups because these are going to be for each individual in your household, okay? So if there's four there in your house, just put a, a, a few drops in each one. And then, uh, and then we're going to pray individually for them. So, so I hope you have your oil now. And I hope you have your little cup. It could be any cup. doesn't matter the size of the cup. I know that, that you may not have this size of cup. It, it doesn't matter which one it is. But I first want to pray. I want to bless it. I want to sanctify it. You know what that means? Sanctification means that you separate it for God's use. So that Crisco oil, we're going to, we're going to separate it for God's use right now. We're going to, we're, we're going to uh, sanctify it in order for us to then pray and then anoint you with oil today. So I want to ask you, each one, take your cup, put it in your hand, put it in your hand. And then I want, to, I want to ask you to put your right hand over it like this. Okay, right hand over it, right this. And I'm going to, I'm going to pray. It's going to, this is going to symbolize my hand right there where you are. And we're going to sanctify this oil now in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? So close your eyes and put your hand over this cup. Lord, I sanctify this oil. And I know that I am not there right now, but you are. Your Holy Spirit is in that room. Your Holy Spirit is in that living room. It's in that bedroom. It's in that office. Your Holy Spirit is there. And I am dedicating this oil for your use because, Lord, we are expecting a miracle to happen. And, Lord, we pray that this oil would be sanctified by you in the name of Jesus. And so we dedicate it for your use in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, you, you know, what is, why, why use oil? Well, oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The anointing was a practice that was done when you anointed kings. And what you anointed a king for was that when he was anointed, it represented God's presence in their life. That means that God's power came upon them to be able to do mighty works. And so today we're going to anoint you and believe that the anointing is going to break the yoke because the Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke. What's a yoke? Well, a yoke, for many of us, we don't understand what that means, but when you have two oxen, you put something on, 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 on top of them so to keep them going. That's a yoke. It keeps you tied and bound to that. Now, something that keeps you bound is not something good. And so we're going to ask that God breaks the yoke the yoke of sickness. If you're, if you're sick, we're going to pray that God heals you right now. The yoke of spiritual bondage. Maybe there's curses in your life. And we're going to pray that those be broken in the name of the Lord. Maybe it's the yoke of addiction. Maybe you're struggling with alcohol or drugs. And we're going to pray that God is going to deliver you today. Maybe it's a yoke of bad thinking. Maybe thoughts of suicide are invading your mind or, or, or thoughts of despair or, or thoughts of violence or, or thoughts of perversion. We're going to pray that God would break that yoke. But we're also going to pray for God's presence and blessing over your finances, over your situation, over your marriage. Are you ready? So I'm going to ask you just to dip your finger. Now, don't, don't cross-pollinate there. Don't, don't stick your finger in anybody else's. Just you, just you. Just your own finger for your own cup. Are you with me? This is your anointing. And so I'm going to just ask you to just dip, dip your finger in that oil right there. And then I want you to just put it on your forehead, right? Close your eyes and put it on your forehead. And then I'm going to pray for you. So Lord Jesus... As your oil is being placed on each one of my brothers and sisters and friends right now, I'm praying that the anointing of the Holy Spirit with power would break every yoke. I pray that those that are sick would recover. I pray that even those that have coronavirus symptoms they would find 
a release of that of those symptoms and they would be cured even now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that those that are struggling with addictions would be set free. I, I, I'm praying that those that are struggling with, with mental issues, that they would find peace. I, I pray for those that, 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 that have evil thoughts, that, that you would bring godly thoughts. I, I am praying for restoration in marriages. I'm praying for you to move powerfully in each one. Father, I pray for divine provision. Maybe somebody lost their job. Lord, I pray that you miraculously continue to provide for them in the name of Jesus. I'm asking, oh Lord, that you would bring joy in the midst of sorrow. That you would turn mourning into dancing. That those that are saddened by the loss of a loved one, that they may find peace in you. Oh God, come into their situation today and minister life. And whatever they're going through today, I pray that the anointing would break the yoke and that the anointing would bring about the power of God in behalf of my brothers and sisters and friends that are watching me right now. In the name of Jesus, I send this word and I declare healing, I declare blessing, and I declare deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and we are going to, Lord, make sure that you receive all the glory and the honor because we believe that you're going to do mighty things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you for doing that. Listen, I know that God is going to do something. So when you receive your miracle, let us know. Just again, write in the comment section of Facebook. Just say, hey, I was healed. Hey, I was delivered. I was touched. I was ministered to you. Whatever it is, give us the joy of knowing that God ministered to your life. And so we are so grateful that you were able to connect virtually during this season of this pandemic to be able to be with us because the church, uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're not suspended. We're just simply doing it in a different way. I want to tell you, that we love you. And, uh, and soon we'll be able to embrace each other again. May God's richest blessings always be in your life. Love you.